Hi. My name is Wesley Taylor. Oh, and I'm Stephanie Shue. And I play Sheldon J. Plankton in SpongeBob SquarePants on Broadway. And I play Karen the Computer Wife, who is wifey to Sheldon J. Plankton on SpongeBob Broadway. And we have props. We are the scheming lovers of SpongeBob. We are coming to you live. Live. At TDF. TDF. At the Facebook headquarters. Facebook! In New York City. New York. Here to answer your burning questions. <laughs> Burn. Burn. He memorized all those. We're hilarious. Things. That was great. Woo! Wow. That was a thrill. Okay. All right. This is so fun. Let's uh, get started. Um, first, just check out all the toys because there's lots of them. I'm very excited. Okay. So the first question we have is, is this your first time playing a cartoon? And what were the unique challenges of bringing these iconic characters to life? Huh. Huh. Um, well, I was in The Addams Family on Broadway, and that... Of course, is based off Charles Adams's uh, comic comics, those cartoons. But I played Lucas Beinecke, which was sort of a new character for the musical. So he wasn't really a cartoon. What about you? Have you played a cartoon? <laughs> uh, I have played a cartoon. Um, I did a kids show at the Atlantic Theater Company based on this children's book called Revolting Rhymes, and I played this like basically like crazy little red riding hood who was like super latina and had i wore this red skin tight jumpsuit that was based off of britney spears uh does that hit me baby one more time yeah uh wait no what was it jumpsuit a red jumpsuit? i'm a slave for you she she comes out on mars no that's um oops i did it oops, again i did oops i did it again <laughs> i got you <laughs> Woo! this is why this is my honey this is the truth um, and so I did. I did play a cartoon. And I think the hardest thing about bringing these, specifically Karen and Plankton, to life is just making it, honoring it in the cartoon itself while still also making it us and real and not making just... Making it our own. Making our own. Okay. Okay. Next up. You did abandon these. I loved that answer. What were your favorite <laughs> pop culture villains growing up? Did they influence how you approached your characters? Uh, so I worshipped Jim Carrey growing up. He was my guy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's a, that's a good one for him. Yay! And he like... was... So, so the mask, uh, Batman, the Joker, come on. He was who I idolized and who I tried to emulate. And... Maybe why I wanted to be a villain, like, from an early age. Because mm. he was playing all these villains so brilliantly. Um, so I'd say every character that Jim Carrey played has influenced me. And here we are. And here we are. And you? And so I, well, you know, it's funny, because I can't think of anyone that comes to mind directly, but I feel like I was so obsessed with Dexter's Lab, and mm. I watched so much of Dexter's Lab, and I feel like Karen is honestly kind of a femme computer version of Dexter. Yeah. Because she's just always upset at you. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> uh, that's so fun. that is like the person who comes to mind. Yeah. I love it. What's the next question? How did you imagine the undersea world of SpongeBob during rehearsals? And then what was it like stepping onto mm. David Zinn's amazing sets for the first time? This is a good question. Very good question. Yeah, I mean. <laughs> it was like this. It, well, no, it was like it was really like, that. It was, it was like that. It was like, oh. He's a genius. It could have been, it could have very easily been like huge like Disney show, like big budget blockbuster, like rain <laughs> curtains and like wad, like actual water. But it's actually the most creative, inventive. Like we made a world undersea with like pool noodles for kelp and hula hoops for corals. And you know, like the most inventive way to create this universe. Yeah, I really honestly felt like the most magic it was like walking into when we magical. first walked in that it's first crazy. day we were all yeah and people were like crying oh, and yeah. it just feels like it's almost like a baby being born and like seeing how magnificent the world is crying people were crying people were like this except this was a smiley face it's just so beautiful if i was leah michelle i'd like have a single tear right a here a single tear just like timed perfectly oh this side 
that. <laughs> For you. Okay, next question. Have you met any of the legendary voices behind the cartoons? Ooh. Yes, we have. Yes, we have. It was kind of amazing. On opening night, most of the original voices, um, at least of the main cast, yeah, <laughs> it was really special. Doug Lawrence, who's referred to as Mr. Lawrence in the Comic-Con community, um, was so gracious and generous and we took lots of photos together and did some interviews together and we took some of the yeah, couples with that, Jill Talley who plays Karen yeah. who is the voice of Karen and we took double couple pictures which was super was awesome. sweet. Awesome. It is really crazy, you know, because you grow up watching these cartoons and hearing these voices for forever and suddenly like being able to meet the person who's voiced these characters for all these years just is so like magical and and really really special. They're so cool. Yeah. And I like listen to his voice in my head for weeks oh my God. Yeah. to drill the voice when cuz I was living in LA and I got an email that like no guarantees, like this doesn't mean you get the offer for ah. Broadway, but we're doing one reading, you know, our final reading before Broadway and uh you know, this could mean, you know. So I like drilled, drilled the voice, drilled the voice, and then I get to the first day of rehearsal and Tina Landau, our director, was like, we're actually not gonna do impersonations. We're going to like bring ourselves to it. So I had to like split the difference a little bit. Yeah, but I will say that when Wes, so Wes came in and, and did like a workshop right before we, we jumped into It was rehearsals. basically my audition. They all had the part and they all watched me audition. It was n no pressure. <laughs> But he walked in and I literally was like, who are you? You're going to just touch you. Who are you? You're amazing. It was like his voice was like perfect. And I, I actually remember the exact oh, moment. I know what, and my face literally was also like this. I was like. I remember the exact moment actually because we were, we were around the piano and we just started jumping into learning music. We didn't do a read through first. Mm -hmm. It was the morning, that first mm -hmm. morning. Mm -hmm. And I did that first uh, solo, or the first lines that, you know, mm -hmm. laugh while you can, or whatever. And you were in the row <laughs> in front of me, and you, like, turned behind, and you were like, you're amazing. <laughs> and I'll never forget that moment, because I felt so safe mm -hmm. in your arms and that from then on. Yeah, it was crazy. It was like a two-day workshop, and We felt we like kissed. we knew each other for years. For years. Yeah. And there was a, like, during the reading... I mean, you had to like kiss me or something and like literally we're just reading it and he just leans over and he's like I'm gonna kiss you is that okay and I was like yeah that's okay <laughs> and then he did and it was great and since then I just we've our lives just, have changed our lives have and changed now but... she's expecting yeah <laughs> you heard it here first <laughs> this is our announcement Bye. on Facebook oh live our TDF <laughs> TDF Facebook live alright we need some music <laughs> Come on. Let's get a clam. What draws you to campy, over the top uh -oh. characters? You know what? <clears throat> I resent this question a little oh, bit. You can talk about it. No, no, no. It's a good question, <laughs> but um, I, I'm going to change the vocab, the ah! language a little bit. What draws you to campy, over the top characters? Let's go with like larger than life. Uh, Deep, <laughs> dropped in. Um, you no, know. but this is interesting because like. <laughs> Our director, Tina Landau of Steppenwolf, like just this brilliant uh, woman, was very set on this not being a theme park musical. Yeah. This not being like just these huge, campy, over the top, you know, people that you, I don't, no mascots, no, you know, we need to be dropped in. We need to be telling the truth, talking and listening. Like real, we're human interpretations of these creatures. And she wanted it to be real and resonate with a real audience. So, um, yes. While it's a cartoon and the world is larger, more theatrical, um, and stylized in nature, um, we still need to be connecting and looking into each other's eyeballs yeah. and telling a story. Even he has an eye patch, so I only look. Into so she one. only has one. I only look into one look eyeball, into. and that's how good of an actor I am. And that's how because good because I am able to see. And just that's how expressive my one eyeball the is. The one window to his soul. Okay. 
That but eyeball will, is trained. I will also say that, so we started swinging people out, and so it's like swings get to, or people who cover different parts of different characters get to, to watch the show. And my bestie, Alan K. Washington, slash husband, slash sister wife, um, who plays Larry the Lobster, swung out the other day, and I was like, so, what'd you think? And, you know, blah, blah, blah. Like, did, did me and Wes do okay? And he was like, you guys were amazing. And he said, y'all are weird. Like, you see, you guys come out and you're like, oh, they're weird. Yeah. And so I feel like the beautiful thing is that we get to be, we are the villains. And we are this, like, curmudgeon couple. And we are very weird. And we get to be, like, weirder than maybe anyone else, which is, like, a true pleasure. But the show is very weird. And I think that's the why it feels so, good. that's why it weird. feels so good to do. Because it just feels so deliciously weird, but in the best way. You know? <gasps> Like, absurd, weird, stupid, but the best kind of stupid, you know? Boom, boom. Bubbles. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Bubbles! <laughs> okay. Um, while SpongeBob is a lot of fun, it also explores some serious themes, like friendship, society, and panic. What do you hope audiences take away from the show? So, I've actually, like said this in a lot of interviews, but I, I do believe this show is, like, the perfect show for Trump's America. For what? For Trump's America. For what? For, for Trump's, Trump's America. America. So, um, sorry. you know, the show, <laughs> the show, you know, the antagonist characters are, are basically Republicans. They're anti-inclusion, anti-immigration, <laughs> anti-science. And it is therapeutic to sort of get to do that every night because I am one of the, I am the villain. And, um. And the or maybe not even associated with a political party, but just not about, you know. Yeah, I don't mean to like shut off people who are watching this, but it, is, <laughs> but it is. <laughs> but but look, it is. Uh, it is. It's the. It's a beautiful message about inclusion, and we have so many, so much gender bending in the show, so much uh, racial diversity, so much size shape diversity throughout the show. I'm incredibly proud to be a part of the show in terms of what it stands for socially. And the message that we're telling. Yeah, I mean, honestly, I I think it's so special to be able to do a show that already has such a huge following based on the cartoon. And to be able to do a Broadway show and sort of create a world that sort of feels like the world that you hope to see in real life. Like, yeah. you know, we say all are welcome here. And that is literally straight from protests and street, like, you know, marches that have been happening in the last year. And that's, you know, important, you know, irregardless of this current time, it's just, you know, I want to see a world in which people are free to be who they are and run around in weird skirts and like whatever, <laughs> you know, and, and also I think, What's so beautiful about SpongeBob and what's so beautiful about Ethan and watching him every night is, you know, at the very end of the show, it's like, you know, no matter how hard and how scary things get and how it feels like the end is coming sometimes, you know, we really do have each other and yeah. we have our community and to have our community and rise up with our community and uplift our community and support each other in that way and realize that that strength in numbers is immensely powerful and also important. I feel just like, I hope that people come away from the show empowered and reminded to to love each other and take care of each other in that way. Yeah, it's incredibly positive. Obviously, SpongeBob is the epitome of positivity. Uh, and in the political landscape of the last two years, it's like <laughs> hugely necessary. Um, and also, um, all are welcome here is something that is said, you know, thematically at the very beginning and at the very end. But in the middle, we lose sight. Mm -hmm. And my character says, you're not welcome here. So um, it's a really good, meaningful, um, important journey, I think, yeah. that we go on every night. Yeah. Um, and I think, too, I hope that, like, this is something that feels very important to me is just that, I hope that people get to just honor their weirdness, you yeah, know? Like, yeah. I, I hope people get to just rock that and feel like that it is embraced and it is special yeah. and you see it on a Broadway stage, so maybe that means you can be as weird as you want to be, too. And Yeah. Yeah, so. We also have, like, the best, most deliciously weird cast. So weird. What did I just oh, do? Oh, you just, str he's, oh, we're drawing now. <laughs>
Oops. Ah, come see our show. Okay, SpongeBob frequently breaks the fourth wall with actors talking to and move with actors talking to and moving within the audience. Has that resulted in any memorable fan interaction? <laughs> yes. yes. Okay, so like I did Rock of Ages, and that was like people would get drunk and heckle, and that wasn't so fun. <laughs> But we at SpongeBob are heckled by literally children, <laughs> which is like the best way yeah. to get heckled because yeah. like it just melts your heart. There's no way you can get frustrated when you're interrupted by. <laughs> okay, so <laughs> recently, <laughs> recently we have this moment together on stage where. It freezes like everyone in the town hall scene. Like all the characters freeze, and we're like having this like evil um, uh, conversation. And uh, and she's like, "You couldn't rap if your life depended on it." She's challenging me to into my song, and I'm like, "Oh yeah, watch!" And I like take this pause, and this kid screams out, "Just do it!" And I like looked up at him and like gave him a look, like challenged him. I was like, I'm on my own time. I'll do it when I'm ready it to do it. It was very, very funny. And like, they'll just scream out, like, "Oh my god!" This girl in the front row, uh, not too long ago, at the very end, when um, when I when I scream something that I didn't mean for everyone to hear, and then I'm like, "They all heard me say that, didn't they?" And this girl in the front row goes, "Yes, we did." <laughs> oh my god. But I, I love I love it because the, one of my favorite. Um, sort of audience interactions was at the very end of the show when like the bubbles fall. There was you know there was this girl like it was like silent. It was like beautiful and you know sometimes adults or whatever you know people who are in the arts you'll come to a show and you'll be like I know what's gonna happen next. Like this is I like this I don't like this. But the kids keep it so pure and they remind us of like how special it is. Yeah. And so the bubbles fell and it was like really quiet and all of a sudden you like heard from the mezzanine this like voice of a little. Angel and she was like, "Yay!" And it like echoed throughout the entire audience, and you could feel this really like palpable relief and reminder of joy and how pure that moment was, both on stage and also in the audience. And so then it becomes like the really magical thing about live theater, where it does become like a conversation. And they have know? no idea how loud they are, and they have no sense <laughs> of like until middle school, you don't have any like peer consciousness or anything. So yeah. you're just like, just honestly, genuinely shouting out something yeah. that is your truth. Yeah. <laughs> it there is, is so yeah, infectious so, and so magical. Ugh. And there's also this part in Pirates where my favorite thing to do is I always scare the bananas out of some. Was that that's not a saying? I scare the banana. I scare the bananas out of someone. Yeah. Um, but there's one seat that I always, literally, I've made it a mission to like hide and then like just jump in their face. And I have made grown women fall out of their seat. And it's like that's your I favorite feel, part of the show. Oh, isn't it? absolutely! Yeah. My favorite part of Pirates is that I thanks. Get to, mine's our kiss. Oh, <clears throat> sorry, babes, babe, babe, babe. We talked about this. So sorry. Um, <laughs> um, uh, but no, I I love Pirates because you we I, I was saying to one of our castmates, I was like, all I get to do in Pirates is just scare people and flirt with people. <laughs> Two anyway, of her favorite things. Two of my favorite: scaring do. people and flirting with people. She makes a great <laughs> girlfriend. On. He's a really great boyfriend. That's it. That's the truth. He's really sweet. Okay. <laughs> Stephanie, did you? Oh my gosh, Wesley Taylor. Were you? Are you? Are you Wesley Taylor from Smash? Did you? Were you on Smash? I think. Oh my god, you guys. Oh my goodness. Oh my. I am with the Wesley Taylor. Stephanie, from Smash. aren't you on some Discover card commercials oh, um, that I can't know. stop seeing every <laughs> other commercial? I don't know. I don't Anywhere know. Anywhere I go. I don't know. Commercial queen over here. Smash queen over here. <laughs> um, I did watch Smash. Uh, I watched a whole reel of like Wesley recently, Taylor. Like recently, didn't kind you? Kind of recently. Um, for all of those who uh, I have a whole, I have a little uh, impression um, of Wesley Taylor's performance on Smash, which is um, <clears throat> this is a bowling ball. Oh, wait, I have this is a bowling ball. I'm embarrassed. I hate the theater. That's a, actually that's, <laughs> that's, that's check actually, out the real. That's actually pretty spot on. Yep, spot on. Thank yeah. you very much. Except the hair flips a little bit more. Yeah, work on it. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> oh my god. But anyway, check it out on uh, Vimeo. Some Annie. Of my so. <laughs> okay. Someone just freaked out. I can feel someone just freaked out. 
Thank you. I know my performance is stellar. She's trying. Um, Wesley, how did you learn to rap so fast? Well, I've uh, had a long rap career. Uh, I was raised by. Uh, no, I, uh, <laughs> I've never. I've actually never rapped before. That's not true. Well. Uh, I don't know the answer to that. That's hard. It was just practice, practice, practice. I would drill that rap. It's really hard. It's a speed rap, but it's only like 60 seconds, so it wasn't... Um, the hardest part was they gave it to me pretty late in the game. They did. Yeah. They did. Because they were like writing it. Um, this is a, the dance break, the speed rap. These are all new additions to the Going Gets Tough, my, my number when the Going Gets Tough. So... Um, I learned it like right before we moved to the theater in tech and I was stressed and I was like anxious about it and so I would just like <laughs> just drill, drill, drill right before bed and right, you know, when I woke up and eventually it just seeped in and now I don't think about it ever. Wesley's really funny when he's stressed because he's like, I don't know, there's no way. And I'm like, you are the most talented person, there's absolutely a way. Like it's so funny to be on the other side because it's always like, you sound amazing. <laughs> I can stress easily maybe. I mean... Stress is a thing. We have time for one more. Can you tell us more about your album being what? split into two acts? What? I'm a little confused about that one. Stephanie. Stephanie. <laughs> I'm, just gonna, I'm just gonna skip it. You beatbox. Steph, you beatbox. Give us a little beatbox oh. freestyle. Oh. I can't wait for this, actually. Ooh. Um, well, this is my impression. Okay, I'll, I'll do a little bit of a, my, my yes. mediocre beatboxing, but then I'll do what my version of Wesley's speed rap is. Yes. <laughs> so get ready. Okay, what I used to do in Chicago was... <laughs> <laughs> you said three words. That's my bit. I do it all the time. I know. It's hard, you guys. Wesley is so talented. I've been I've been practicing that bit for for months and and uh, that's just that's where I'm at in that process. I'm still so. processing <laughs> all of this right now. Sometimes I slip in a few keywords. Um that yeah, was... I'm a little I'm not warm. I'm not warm. That's amazing. Oh, and we got another one from the audience. Live. Live. Because we're live. Leave it. Okay, from the audience. If you could play any role from any story ever written, what would you choose? Oh, wow. Uh, my ultimate dream role is uh, Iago in Shakespeare's Othello. Mm. Wow. You know, I think my dream would be to to do something that I wrote. Like, I would love mm. to do, like, a one-woman show with, like, an... I have it in my mind, actually, and I'm working on it, but if it were ever, like, public enough to be on Broadway, like, a one-woman show with, like, a choir of, like, women and non-cis males, basically, like, genderqueer, trans, um, to do that. That'd be very cool. That would be so amazing. Stephanie Shu, live at the palace. Live at the palace. 1,600 <laughs> seats. One woman. One woman. Almost five feet tall. Not quite. Broadway, y'all. This is Broadway. But really, I think, like, developing your own work is, yeah. is just such a dream. And something I'm learning is my first time on Broadway and something that I'm really, like, enjoying about it and thinking is so special is that people do literally come from all over the world to hear this story and our story that we're telling. And when you're lucky enough to be working on something that you know matters, it's it, it's just like the fastest way to get information out there. For sure. So, I like yeah. that answer. Thanks. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you so much. I approve. Much. Oh, 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 oh. Wait, are we done? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, when we say bye, can we go back into the... Yeah, we okay, should, okay, we should, okay, we should. Okay, okay. <clears throat> okay, ready? Okay. Oh, right. oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Bye. Goodbye. <laughs> Come see SpongeBob on yes. Broadway. Go to TDF and get those tickets. Oh. You won't be sorry. No, you